Yo, what's good? It's Benji, founder of Playlist Supply, and you're listening to the Unsigned Podcast. Just amazing, man. I think, like, you know, we talked about on our initial call, and um, I just think so needed. Just like you're saying, it's like this this area that um, people have no idea how to go at it and that's partly by design from like Spotify and the other DSPs point of view, right? They kind of want to hide that and say like, no, focus on rap caviar, focus on, you know, um, whatever big play, the pop playlist or whatever's over on, on Apple music. So yeah, I just think it's a tool for, just like you said, for artists on the come up, it's a great way for them to start to build those fan bases. Also, you know, it, we're not saying, I think what's important to, to mention too is we're not saying that those playlists on Spotify or Apple Music aren't important, right? Those official playlists, like very important. But it's, you know, as, a, as an up and coming artist, you only have so much leverage, right? And so the way to kind of combat that on the come up is to start small and build up. And I think do, tapping into third party playlists is a great way to do that. Because if you find a couple of songs that you have some success with, now there's some actual data that you can use to pitch to those bigger playlists to be like, see, I've been on the platform. Look at these third party people that are picking me up. Like they are the tastemakers as well. And the people who are smart, at, you know, running the, you know, the curators running the big playlist, they know that too. They know that they're not the only ones that do this and that everybody makes their own playlist for their friends and their family and what have you. And there are certain people that, you know, rise to the top. And so again, that's where I think, your, your your tool really comes into play, man. So, you know, just really appreciate oh, yeah. you making that, you know, for, for artists and managers alike. I'm like, yo, this shit is just like needed. It's needed. Thank um, you. Yeah, man. Um, the other thing that you talked about in there too is just that, and I really want to hammer this home because not enough people talk about this shit, um, is just, you know, it, it, a lot of this is like, you know, the entertainment business and, you know, smoke and mirrors and shit like that. And, and I, I wanted to spell that right here with, with this specifically. You talked about playlist supply being one tool, right? I, I think that's so important because a lot of times, especially when you're young, you, you kind of put all your eggs in one basket for one marketing tactic. And that's really what it is. It's one tactic that you should be doing in conjunction with all the other things. So just want you to talk about that for a second and, and how you, you think play the supply isn't a silver bullet, right? It, it's, it's really, yeah. you know, a, another tool that they should be using uh, in, in, you know, their, their toolkit and their arsenal. Yeah, absolutely. So I think like, I think like, especially as like a, as like an indie artist and like an up and coming artist or it's really easy to get caught into this idea. Like you see like the anomaly of like, you know, like, um, some artists come up off TikTok or someone gets signed off of like their one drop on SoundCloud. And like, there is no silver bullet. You're never going to get that record deal or that manager, or there's no one software or one run of ads or marketing that's going to make it, that's going to make you pop off for all these people. It's like most of the people that you hear about, like that kind of stuff happening are total anomalies. And it's like, like you don't hear about all the other people. And even in those cases, you've got to have like the foundation laid and that like laying that foundation is it's using playlist supply and getting in a bunch of different playlists. It's running ads. It's using discord and building out a community. It's a, a lot of these people, they've got kind of like a jumping pad. So when that kind of like that ignition moment happens, everything else is already in order for things to start rolling. And so, yeah, I think, I think, you know, like, like, playlisting and playlist supply is just one element of like a whole, a successful rollout. And it's, it's dependent on a lot of other things. And it's like, you know, um, those editorial playlists are a shot in the dark. Like you do the submission through their thing and it's, it's, it's totally random. And it, it even beyond being random, it's like pretty, it's super unlikely. Like there's, it's a small number of them, but everything else you do, with branding, with marketing can play into, you know, how you get into third party playlists. Like you can, if you're, if you're the way you structure your pitch, you might share your Instagram. If you got a fire Instagram, they're going to check it out. You could, some of these people like on playlist supply, you can, you can search by Instagram or by Twitter handle. Some of these people, you can DM them like just like person to person, listener to artist, And like, you can try and have like a more organic 
talk with them before anything happens. And you can, you know, you can offer them a shout out and like bring them into your world and share a snippet of some unreleased music. And it's like, it's like kind of all the other strategies that you might be implementing, like wash each other's hands. And it's like a rollout shouldn't be like one dimensional. Like if you've got say, um, you know, if you've got like, say like 200 bucks, you know, spend, spend that 20 on playlist supply for a month and then spend, you know, 20 on running some Facebook and Instagram ads and spend 20 on some YouTube ads and spend another 20 on, you know, getting your friend to follow you for a day with their iPhone and, you know, kind of like diversify, like the, the more, the more lanes you, you hit, the more likely you're going to be to find new people in those respective lanes. There's no like, there's no like one stop shop for like coming up like that. It does. It doesn't happen anymore. Even if you get your dream record deal, you're going to get your advance. You'll get your marketing budget. And a lot of times these labels don't know what to do either. And so it's going to be back to square one. Like where's the money going? Who's getting paid? How, how's the rollout happening? And like, you can leave it up to the label, but like a lot of people are also under the impression like, oh, I get signed to a label and they just handle it. But um, the, the, a lot of these labels are right now, they'll sign a hundred artists so that two of them can be successful and then they'll shelf the rest of them. And so if you're not thinking out of the box, if you don't have some cutting edge way, like if you're not like, okay, I'm getting this deal or I'm getting this money or I'm, I'm going to pay someone to do like, uh, you know, I'm going to pay an assistant to be on playlist supply, or I'm going to pay someone to shoot the music video. If you don't have like, if you're not thinking about the strategy, then you're, you're like, it, regardless of, of how much money you have, regardless of the record deal situation, it's going to be a struggle. There's no, there's no silver bullet. That's like a, a huge misconception. And yeah, like just, just one thing I can share for people that are going to hear this and try playlist supply is something that I've started doing. That was kind of like another like element that was outside the box is there's, there's some email softwares like GMAS and MailChimp, which allow you to kind of like, you can automate responses. And so like, you know, say you're reaching out to a hundred playlists and you're ex you can export spreadsheets from playlist supply, upload them into MailChimp or GMAS. And, you know, it's, it's just like another little software where instead of you spending like 10 hours doing individual emails or responding to people individually, you can set it up to where if people don't hit you back, hit the, it hits them again automatically in like a couple weeks. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, thinking outside the box and like, you know, thinking about, okay, what are like five, 10 things I can do? There's no like one thing that just like does it. Yeah. Oh man, you, you hit on so many great things in there. Like, so like, it, it's so important. And, and let me be clear too. I, I, I just wanted to call that out because you and I had previous conversations about that. And, and um, I, I wanted us to kind of set the 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 tone uh, of where artists and, and how artists should be thinking about jumping on playlists that being said the tool that that you guys develop is is so crucial for people starting out because playlists are you know when you're on a really big playlist like and you're on the top of that really big playlist like those do drive a lot of listens and that's when things really start to pick up for you you start to get some real streams coming in you can leverage that in, into different conversations and different opportunities so it is important but you don't get there unless you start really small and i think it's important to use a tool like play the supply because you can do it yourself you're talking about setting the foundation i think that's so true because if you don't have this if you are the anomaly right and you get lucky with your first record and everybody wants to sign you it's going to be so fucking hard for you to hang on because you have no idea what you're doing. You don't know your, your look, your sounds, your fans, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times those fans are fans of that moment, that song or that clip. They're not a fan of you. And so they may not necessarily latch on to the next song uh, that you put out because they don't really give a shit about you. They like that last moment. And so it takes time. Right. So it's extremely important to do this nitty gritty work so that you can see what's working, what's not working. So that when you do get that budget, when you do get that deal, you can say, no, this is where the money should be spent. You're in charge of you, of your life and your career. And you have to do these things like this. This is the work. 
it's all these small things stacked on top of each other that creates that foundation that hopefully gives you that longevity because that's the point. The point is to not be a one hit wonder. The point is to be here in five years or 10 years exactly. or 15 years to be able to do it. And again, that brings me back to what it is that you guys do. It's such a crucial point with the scalability of playlisting to like be able to tap into the people that are creating that because what's fucking crazy is that Spotify will tell you to make a playlist, right? They'll tell individual listeners to make playlists to share with family and friends or while you're eating dinner, or, you know, we have a playlist dinner for you or a, a playlist for, for your dinner too. They have all those things, but then they don't give you the access to those uh, third party people that have built up, you know, really cool things or, you know, that they just make it hard for you to do, but they also want you to do that as well. So there, it's a weird juxtaposition. And so I think, you know, this, the, the power of your system, being able to search people, find them based on keywords, hashtags, uh, curious to know, can you, can you search the, um, can you search the number of followers that a playlist has too? Yeah. You can search for like any metric that is like about, a uh, uh, like any metric that's like, like available that's... about the playlist, you can search it and like, like, yeah, like just another so one is like, thanks. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I really appreciate it. And like, I don't know, this sentiment's been super mirrored by like, I've, I've heard from so many artists and so many management teams, like, like just how, how like pivotal it's been. And you can like, you can also like, Yo, you can, sorry ask, to cut you off. Sorry to cut you no, off. No, go for I, got it. It. I was going to say, I got it, man. For, for, for 20 bucks too. Like, that's the thing. Like, this is like a realistic fee. Like if it doesn't work for you, you spent twenty dollars, not two thousand dollars. And when you're on the come up, two grand is like, oh shit, that's like your rent or you know your bills to like live your life. So for twenty dollars to be able to test out a piece of software to keep coming back to it every single month, that is fucking doable. And again, that's why I think it's so crucial because like it's a tool that's needed and it's it's accessible. You're not even charging two hundred dollars a month. You're like twenty dollars a month. This is for a lot of people to use. This isn't for a select few to help them be even bigger. It's like, no, anyone can use this and, and they'll find some sort of value, right? They may not get a bunch of playlists, but they may find a bunch of really cool DJs that they can then tap into to do a show with in a different state or a different country, start to build out tours that, that are, you know, that are equally as important. So again, I think what you guys have built is dope and, and sorry to cut you off, but I really wanted to hit home on that on that dollar amount too. Like this shit is doable. Like this is, this is the type of thing you spend your money on because if it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. You still bare minimum you're meeting. If you're doing it the right way, you're meeting new people and, and that can help grow your music. And, and for $20, like anybody could do this. Fuck. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I appreciate it. And like, I'm like, I, I like am a very DIY manager. Like I've done time with the labels and, you know, I work like I'm like an independent manager right now. And I like I have a DIY approach to everything. And when creating Playlist Supply, me and my team, like we wanted to make it accessible. And like there's also like no limit. Like you could you could go and sign up for Playlist Supply for like a couple months and you could use it super hardcore for those couple months. And you can export all your results to like a PDF or spreadsheet. And so like say you're an indie artist who you're like, OK, I'm rolling out music once a month for the next year, but it's, you know, it's th the album is all hyper pop. You can go and you can put in an hour a day. And by the end of the, the two months, you could have 10,000 hyper pop playlists. And then boom, that, that was the, you don't have to keep signing up if you don't want to. A lot of the people who sign up re and return are people that, you know, they want to do more contextual research. They're, it's not, it, every time you search, you're going to get new results. So they're looking for new people their agencies, their labels, their artists who are like, you know, they, they want to connect with people like via DM. And it's like, um, yeah, there's like, there's like a, a ton of uses, but you're, I'm like, we wanted to make it accessible. And like, you can use this, like you can just sign up for one month if you want, and you can get like an unlimited amount of like playlists in that month and have, you could have people to reach out to all year if you wanted to. <laughs> And so like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 oh man, the, the, the accessibility and just like you said, being able to export the information, you're like, yo, we're not even holding it. We're not even holding it yeah. back. We're not like you have to come in here and, and all that type of shit. I think that's like, 
oh man, you just got to tip your cap to that. Cause, cause a lot of people don't do that. They, they want to hoard that shit. And, and at the end of the day, it, I think it comes down to just being open, right? If you're open with that, um, you know, it, it'll work. The, those, the, the right people will find it, will use it, will find value in it and then only big you up. You know what I mean? Like that's for, from your business standpoint, like that's, that's the win for you guys. Like, Oh no, we know how much value this holds. And if it really works for you and you only used it for a month, we know you'll be singing our praises because it really fucking hit for you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think honestly, I think the, the, the playlisting world is, is only going to get more and more expansive. Like, I think, like you said, like, Spotify and Apple Music and they've got the back end data. They know how pivotal this stuff is. They know like getting into 10 third party playlists on the day of release starts like an algorithmic snowball where all of a sudden you're getting into playlists automatically and you're getting into weekly mixes. And you know, I, I think they understand this and I think they're gonna they're gonna just like we touched on before, I foresee like in the future like they're going to lay in on this community aspect more and they're going to make it easier to share a playlist with a friend or to share it with other people or like for artists to like, like show which ones they're in. And yeah, I think, I think it's only going to get bigger. I, I think getting a jump on playlisting now with something like playlist supply is like only good. You're only going to understand the world, like the playlist environment more and like have an edge on like, as that kind of thing blows up. Yeah, it's really just, it's it's also just like market research. You pay 20 bucks a month to just see the way these things are moving and what's really taking off and what's not taking off just allows you to tap into to what's moving and where to spend your time and, and you know, limited time, limited resources. And it, it's so crucial. Again, great segue into, you know, kind of the final question I have here for you is like, where, you know, aside from, we'd love to hear your, your thoughts a little bit more on playlisting too, but where do you see, you know, uh, uh, the, the future of the music business going? Um, and, and do you think it's feasible for artists to really start to build up their own subscription models, just like Spotify, Apple Music, Netflix? Like, do you think artists can offer uh, that much value um, to, to people on the come up to charge 10, you know, five, 10, 20 bucks a month? You know, I've, that's a great, that's a super good question. Um, and it's like, I think, I don't know, I, I love that. I love these kind of questions. I love this type of shit. And just thinking about like the convergence of tech and music and where things will be in like five years, 10 years. I talk to my manager friends about this all the time. And, you know, I've asked myself before, if Drake took all of his music off of every streaming platform and made his own, would people pay for it? And I don't know, like, I'm not sure they would. Like from a marketing and business perspective, it's crazy. Spotify really has a monopoly on the streaming world. And they've got like this iron grip right now. And this like market share that's just like untouchable. And I I can't help but imagine that it, I don't think I don't I, I think like, unfortunately, because of the way the 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 music business is currently like the current paradigm, it's like, it's pretty difficult um, to put power back in the artist's hands in a lot of ways. Like, even with playlist supply, it's like a tool that does put power in the artist's hands, but it's like, it's like derivative of like a bigger platform and of a bigger thing. That's like, that has that, that has that like crazy market share. And, but what I do think just like, just like with playlist supply, like there will be new technologies, there will be new streaming services. There will be things that arrive that change the game. And it's, it's just like TikTok, like TikTok came out, people started using it. There's artists that have blown up just because of TikTok. Um, there's like, there's songs that like, that are getting signed straight off of TikTok. I hear people telling me like TikTok's the new Instagram, like Instagram's dead. Focus on doing a TikTok every day. If you're like an up and coming artist, then, you know, that wasn't the case five years ago. And so it's like, you know, being keen to like, what's, what's popping, like what's new, what are the kids on? Like, what are, what are the younger people on? like being able to pick up on trends and um you know i think another like like that's kind of like the diy from the artist perspective i think from like a kind of like music industry professional perspective you know i i have i have a friend who's an a r and he uses playlist supply as like an a r research tool and he'll type in the name of an artist that he wants to sign and he'll see which playlists this artist is in 
and then it'll see which is the artist that this listener, who's probably just some college kid, is also listening to. Are these other potential signees? And there's going to be a lot more like like tech data based analysis. Like a lot of that original A and R instinct, I think, is dwindling. And you're going to have labels and people using data on the back end to see like, is this artist successful? Is this someone I want to sign? Like, and and I think like. I think the future is going to be like, you know, like you're going to have like all this like data from something like Playlist Supply or from Spotify and the labels are going to realize what this data is worth. They're going to realize like, okay, this artist pixel might be worth just as much as the licensing on the hit song because it means I can take his audience and I can remarket it for a new up and coming artist that's in the same genre. And I don't know, it's it's, it's, you know, when you think about it like that, it's a little bit intimidating, but it's, you know, it's it, every, you can, you can, you can Google this stuff. You can Google how to set up a pixel. You can Google like the back end data. I think, I think the future of music is in technology, but it's going to be like, it's going to be like on the music industry's terms for sure. Yeah, man, there, there, there's a lot, there's a lot there. It's, you know, artists have the tools to be able to create these things and it's, it's an exciting time because it's the beginning of it, but it's also, um, it's still unknown. It's like, are, you know, can they develop enough value? Like one song isn't, isn't enough value to get somebody to pay $10 a month. It's just not when they can pay $10 a month and get 70 million songs, right? It's hard to do that. And this, you know, broke, um, uh, you know, young person is paying for Netflix and Disney plus and Hulu and all these other things. Like it's hard. It's, 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 you're, you're not just competing against the other artists. You're competing against these bigger entities as well. So the value that you, um, have to provide has to be enormous. So, uh, yeah, I think that's an interesting conversation going back to your Drake point about whether or not somebody like him could do that. And, yeah, I, I don't know because he's because he's so big. I don't I'm not sure it would work for the biggest artists right now um, to just jump ship because they're it's almost like a golden handcuffs situation. They're making so much money from those streaming platforms and those record labels are giving them so much like Universal's already said Drake has an unlimited budget. So just imagine how much money they're paying him on top of that. Like unlimited marketing budget is what they meant, but they're also just paying him is the fuck they're paying him, you know, to, to keep him there and keep him happy. So it's so hard for him to just be like, nah, I'm going to come over here and start this other thing. At the same time, it is, it, I think it's like, it's another question, right? What is going to happen for that artist coming up right now? That artist who's 19, 20, 21, who's really trying to build it up. And by the time they're 23 or 24, they've built that really solid foundation and they've added enough value back to their community that their community is like, no, this is worth paying five or $10 a month, you know? And I think that, that that's, it's, we're in the middle of it right now. I mean, another example of that is Joe Rogan too. Like Joe Rogan probably left money uh, on the table by taking a hundred million dollars from Spotify. Like had because he had to put everything there and not everywhere, everywhere, right? Where he could have just charged people access to to that content. Like he he gave it to one spot. He probably left some money on the table. So it is interesting. It's like depending on where yeah. you're at in the whole pecking order, you know what you can actually do or what you'd want to do. Like for Drake to do that, that's like a fucking huge financial risk like major Definitely. financial risk for him to do that you know but for the artist coming up yeah it's like oh this is just how it is like this is how i've always built it so it is and and can that artist get to a drake spot or do they eventually have to partner with the label i.e a bank right you know what i mean to get a bigger influx of cash to get bigger looks on radio and tv and and so on and so forth yeah, no, I, yeah, you're super spot on. And I use Drake as the example for that reason. Like it yeah. gets to a certain point where if you have enough leverage, you like part, you like he brings traffic to Spotify too. There's like mutual interest there. Um, and so I'd like to think if it wouldn't happen with someone that's like the most popular, that has the most leverage, that has, you know, some of the most timeless music of our generation, some of the best content 
then is it even possible for other people? And, you know, I, and I think it's interesting also, like um, a lot of people don't know this, but Spotify actually owns um, a, a percentage of DistroKid, which is, it's like, you know, they're getting paid not just from the streaming and from the listening, but also when people put the music online, like when people submit it. And so it's like, yeah, and, and, and if you follow the money all the way back, um, you know, you, you, you got to look at like who's, who owns Spotify, which, which of these labels have the, the major partnerships. It's, there's, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like, I like, there's a lot of opinion that once you get to a certain point, you have to kind of partner with one of the big dogs in some sense or another in order to kind of get that increased awareness. And yeah, like you said about like Joe's podcast, like, you know, maybe, maybe, it was worth it for him to leave some money on the table because he knew, Spotify was like, listen, we're going to just load you into all these new podcast playlists and you're going to have to not worry about marketing yourself because we're going to market you. And it was like, okay, how much am I saving by getting this extra reach, by getting this extra, like by getting this extra marketing, by getting these extra resources that they provide versus how much am I leaving on the table? And it's, 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 it's definitely interesting. And, there are elements of it that like, you know, like for a long time, like since albums and records stopped being sold individually, like in physicals, artists make money on touring and on merchandise and, you know, streaming, it, it is an outlet, but people who think they're going to make a living off of streaming, like better be prepared to do a fuck ton of numbers. Like you, that's not like, that's not how a lot of artists make a living in, in the modern industry. And, you know, Spotify, has a lot of resources by being that one-stop platform that benefit touring. Like, you know, they don't give enough data now. Like, I think there needs to be way more data and way more transparency, but you know, they're linking up with, with like, with like touring websites and software and they're doing automatic emails and you know, they're, they're still, they're like, they're, they're keeping the carrot right in front where you have to kind of like work with them in order to do what normally brings in money. But I definitely think that, you know, the way streaming is right now, it, it definitely is not sustainable for developing artists and for smaller artists. And it's, it's, it's a struggle. And that's like, that's part of the reason why, like I, when I like wanted to lay in with like Playlist Supply and more on digital, cause I'm working with a developing artist. And the first thing an a &R or a person at a label is gonna do is check out their Spotify and be like, how many listeners do they have? How many, how many hits does their biggest song have? And like those metrics, like, like it's just one streaming platform have become like super, super, like it's, it's super crucial. Like it's, it's a lot of its optics, but it's also not, it also is like, it shows how, how big you are. Um, and yeah. And I think, you know, another example that isn't Drake that actually was, you know, I don't, it, it's been successful and like, I'm a big fan of it. I use it, but title was like, was like one, was like Jay-Z and like, you know, it was, it was like his idea to kind of like re recoup some of that market share. And, you know, th they give bigger payouts for streams than Spotify. There's there, there for a long time, there's artists that have only dropped their music on title or who will drop their album on title before other platforms. And it's like, okay, if like, if I'm, if I want to listen to Jay-Z, if I want to listen to Kanye, if I want to listen to like, maybe not just Drake or just one crucial artist, maybe the value of a collective of artists can be enough to take away that market share. And so I think that's like, I wouldn't be surprised if, if something like that happened. Like I could, I could definitely foresee like maybe not one or two big ones, but maybe they're just like leading the charge. And there's like, an exodus from one of these big streaming platforms to something else. And yeah, like what, if, you know, what if, what if TikTok started doing their own streaming? Like, I don't know, like with the way technology works and how quick shit moves these days, the future is super untold. And I try not to be too like pessimistic. I try and remain optimistic because, you know, up until now, like it, like, you know, it, even with Instagram, like when Instagram first started popping, it was like, holy shit like now there's artists getting signed off of instagram like and and there's people who got signed off of instagram who in like the like you know the the cd sales days no one would have ever heard of them like these people have never like they've never had a physical of their music and they might never have a physical of their music and they just got like a million dollar record deal and went triple platinum it's like 
our, that's how it's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, yeah, the, those tools uh, for artists to succeed on their own are, are there, you know, but it is about how you use them and, and about how much um, value you do add. And, and, and again, I think it goes back to empathy, empathy for the fan to say, hey, they're going to give me money. Like, what am I going to give for them? And not be so... Um, uh, uh, not not think so much like an artist from you know 30 or 40 years ago that was like I need to be mysterious and mystique and like it's a one to many I'm gonna tell you what I'm thinking and I'm cool and you're not like that yeah. I think is just like fading away and probably like uh, up until very recently that worked like probably the last person to really kind of do that a couple of people probably be uh, Lana Del Rey, uh, The Weeknd, um, that were, you know, you're talking 2010, 2011, 2012, when they were kind of coming in that they could be these shadowy figures and people still be like, what is that? Like, it's so hard to do that now when everybody else is giving so much of themselves. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's very interesting. And yeah, much like you, I try and remain uh, optimistic because um, – there's, we're just getting more tools. We're getting more access. We're, we as managers and artists, and, and, and it's about how we, we use them. And if we keep our head on right and we pay attention to what's going on in the industry, we get some, you know, some warning signs of what's working and what's not working that can help guide us to, to where we need to go and where we want to go. So, so yeah, man. Well, listen, I, I appreciate the talk, man. Like, I'm so glad we can make this happen. We're, we're coming down to time here. I know, I know you got a busy schedule. Uh, but but before you left, wanted to just check in as well and just see, you know, what else you're working on that you're super excited about. What Are there any projects in particular with your artists? And, uh, yeah, where can people get at you if they're looking to chop it up with you as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like we're looking on expanding playlist supply. We've got a lot of new updates. We've got a lot of big plans for that. We want to expand it, make it more accessible, get more metrics, make it easier to use. So playlist supply is going to be like, you know, it's something that's going to be under constant development. Um, if you want to reach out, you can hit me up on, you know, on, we have every social media at playlist supply. My team is like super, super accessible. So if you reach out, you're probably going to talk to me or like my, like the person, my project manager who works directly next to me. And, you know, we're, we're always happy to set up like a, a, a tutorial. Like if you want to get on a screen share or a call, like we'll walk you through like how it works before you even sign up. And yeah, like me personally, I'm, you know, like, like in, on top of being optimistic, I'm not like a coder. Like I'm not like as I'm not really like a tech person, but I'm like trying to, I've got a few other tools that we're working on behind the scenes and I'm trying to find, I'm trying to, if I'm not finding the next platform, I'm trying to create it. Um, I think that there needs to be more like people like music managers and people from the business side thinking like, where are these gaps? Like having these conversations, like look at this, like look at the way streaming is and how it's like all on one or two platforms and thinking outside the box, like what can I tap in with a few coders and what can I change? And so my team is, is working on a few tools similar to Playlist Supply for different platforms that are just gonna be like data tools. Like we're working on a TikTok tool, like. We're, there's there's a whole bunch of different things that we're working on and so i'm i'm just gonna keep on like you know keep on keeping on and creating new stuff and yeah like creating things that like kind of like you know fill in some of this gray area in the industry oh man uh, uh again can't thank you enough for the time man i'm i'm super excited uh, to watch uh, your ship flourish, man, because I think um, you, you, you're doing it the right way. Like you're, you're thinking about it from the right, you know, standpoint of how can we help? How can we add value to, to people's lives? And, and a lot of time when we're on the come up, it's, it's uh, especially early on, it's like me, what can I, how can I get this thing? And as soon as we kind of flip it on its head and we say, okay, what can I do for you? That's when I think the magic starts to happen, man. And, and you guys are well on your way to doing that. And it's just exciting to see, man. So, so thanks again for the time. And, and, you know, we'll yeah. definitely have to do this again soon, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. I have one more plug. Oh yeah, I, please, please. I, because I've talked about being a manager, like I'll just share like one of the most recent acts that I signed. They're called Enum Claw. That's that indie rock band that I was talking about. 
you can just look up Enum Claw Band. They've been on Fader. They've been on Pitchfork. And so if anyone's like curious, like, okay, like, is this guy like a fire manager or not? <laughs> look up Enum Claw. Check like, him out. It's indie rock. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to make him the next Oasis. So like that, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah, absolutely, bro. I think that I think that that's awesome too. And in a great genre for really starting to tap into playlisting too. Like obviously hip hop has dominated things and, and rock and other spots and um you know they've been around just as long if not longer and they still haven't really kind of had that playlist success. So I think that's like a, a great spot to be in. You're really trying to help tap into those the, those things that are moving. So. That's awesome, man. We'll definitely check it out. We'll drop it in the uh, the, the podcast notes to uh, links to, to the group social or Spotify or, or whatever. And uh, and yeah, man, thanks again for the time, bro. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I, I really appreciate talking and the opportunity. And yeah, yeah, I love this. Thank you so much. Adele, man. We'll talk soon, bro. Peace.